On you on the show today, we wrap up Gaming PC Week with one of the fastest rigs on the market, the Falcon Northwest Talon. Encased in a steel and aluminum chassis, this monster boasts dual NVIDIA video cards, a tricked out paint job, and 8 gigs of RAM. I think I just did the entire review just now. Wow. But really, tune in because you can also train it to catch field mice. Whoa. After all, it is a yeah, you need to say Falcon first. I didn't have to. Oh. Great. <laughs> Plus, the hilarious Jay Baruchel from the Sorcerer's Apprentice stops by to talk about magic, text-based gaming, and to tell us interesting stories about his time spent working with Nicholas Cage. <laughs> then Blair Butler heads to Rhode Island for a look at the exclusive toys that Hasbro will be bringing to San Diego Comic-Con. Dark Ball of Transformers will show you the goods that will be burning up eBay next week. It'll be awesome! And in our AOTS Classics, uh, we'll see Kevin back in his uncensored stand-up comedy oh, days. Yeah. Uh, behold, a full-body leather suit in Kevin Pereira Raw. Yeah. Full-body leather, huh? Ladies, you're welcome. And gentlemen, you're welcome. Wow. The internet. This week, it gave us a humping dog and a Russian on fire. Yeah. God bless you, internet. <laughs> What about the 4th of July? Yeah. Well, it's come and gone, but explosive videos are still igniting on the web. <laughs> and this one comes to us from the Czech Republic. Yes. Hey, Prague, fireworks. You're doing them wrong. <laughs> they did it. It's much more efficient than sparklers. I sparklers, love you, it. you blind one person at a time. There, it's an entire crowd. <laughs> Let me think about it. It's like, hey, everybody, happy Independence Day. You're on fire. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Prague. Maybe next time you should check before you blow people up. Ah! Bam! And at number four today, more Old Spice ads. Yes. yes. Usually. Usually on the show, we aren't won over by online virals, uh, but Old Spice Pitchman and, of course, friend of the show, Isaiah Mustafa, yeah! has been responding to online comments about his popular series of swan diving commercials. On YouTube, 12755JDH commented, I love these commercials. And I love you, 12755JDH. <laughs> and in case, as your name suggests, you actually are a robot, then I say to you, Part. I know. Oh, wait, scandalous. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, th there is more. Oh, yes. um, it seems that our very own Kevin Pereira got his own personal shout out. Check it. Listen, uh, I, I said this on the, the, the Twitterverse. I would say it's a dream come true, but I have never dared to dream so big. <laughs> my mind has been blown. Hello, Kevin. Thank you so much for your compliment on my newest commercial film. Your compliment means more than most because you too are a handsome man much like myself. <laughs> Did you know that when one handsome man compliments another, somewhere in the world a luxury style hot tub is born? It's true. I did the research. Somewhere, because of your compliment, a hot tub has just appeared and it's most likely filled with attractive women and delicious candies. <laughs> For this I thank you. And the world thanks you. Monocle smile. <laughs> yes! Secret, but yes. I, I am so jealous of that, Kevin. You have no you idea. You have every Isaiah? right to be out. I want my own. You have every right to be jealous. I, well, okay, look, it's it's really nice that you got a compliment from yeah, another man, to but say um, the least. okay, you, you you know it's not true that a, a hot tub appears with ladies in candies, right? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. But okay, <laughs> all right. No, it's not, Kevin. Oh. it's not true. Are you? Why are you doing this on live TV? I'm not. I'm just telling you. I can't, it doesn't do actually I to, happen. Do I to, okay, I'll show you. <laughs> look away. Now look at me. I'm walking off set. Now, I'm in front of a green screen, and I'm complimenting men. Isaiah, you look fantastic. <laughs> now look away. Now back at me. 
I'm now in a hot tub. And now that hot tub is filled with beautiful women. And delicious candy. Now we're in space. Monocle smile. They ruined the World Cup and like a movie monster that won't stay dead, they've struck again in today's number two. And their victim? is all of cinema. Yeah, uh, so far we've only found the corpses of the classic film scores from Rocky or Mission Impossible. Oh, uh, Superman. Mm -hmm. Superman was in there as well. Yeah. We're pretty sure there are other victims, though. can ruin anything. Yeah, but uh, that's that's a given. We've known yes. that. What I want to know is can they take something that's already ruined and make it better? Whoa. Yes! Yes, they did it! All right, in at number three, a man on fire who is not Denzel Washington or Freddy Krueger yeah, for that no, matter. No, just some Russian who seemed to not understand that sometimes things that are explosive actually explode. Yeah, no. oh, hey, coming in at number one today, folks, we have an epic battle that I think will rank up there with uh, the Rumble in the Jungle. I really do. Or the, uh, the Thrilla in Manila. Nice. It's basically two gentlemen combatants, one armed with a Cat nine tails the other a hefty seven-pound dildo. <laughs> Is that, like a, is that an acronym or is it I'm a, on Attack of the Show. I felt it just okay. then. Making sure. Courtesy of Duda Nation, here's the harm with the baby arm. The malice with the phallus. <laughs> Coming in at number one today, we have, uh, this is interesting, it's an animal video from Japan that is not a whale being murdered or a tentacle going up somewhere awesome. So, in terms of clips from Japan about animals, this is very unusual. I know, yeah. very odd. Uh, so, house dogs have to improvise when they have a bone to bury. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen so much trace evidence, and now I'm really wishing I hadn't used the black light. <laughs> Looks like that teddy bear has already been stuffed. Yeah! Here to review a few more of the eccentric indie games out there, including one where babies shoot out of vaginas <laughs> like bouncy cannonballs. Yeah! Oh, games, how we love them. Uh, but first, this week, Mel Gibson made some not safe for work phone calls to his ex. <laughs> Here is our very own Drunkle Ted doing a dramatic reading of the official transcript. <laughs> Sana, you're an unintelligent, mean word for vagina and promiscuous. 
Seriously! Oh, okay. <sighs> 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 By the love, he's gonna set your heart alight. Because I'm gonna commit arson against you! You professional fornicator! You're a effing lady who accept money for penises! You're such a promiscuous lady dog. The way you hold your baby close to your face while I'm trying to punch it! Okay, okay, thanks for that, Drunkle Ted. Thank you. Let's... I'm not done. This is just an intermission. No, coming. it's not an intermission or intermission. You're done. You're done, Drunkle Ted. Yeah. You dicks me back! Okay, thank but you. But first, you'll give me mouth love! Yes, but few could soar as high as the Falcon. <laughs> Still like it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Go back, commit it. got to caught it. up in the wire. Wait, commit to it. Ready? No, it didn't. No, 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 no. Right. commit to it. Ready? Dun, 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 dun. What does that have to do with what I'm about to do? No, I'm doing the music before the, the pan in. Okay, ready? Watch really? this. Really? Wait, go, 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 go. Ready? Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Gadgetron. Falcon, attack! <laughs> Falcon Northwest has been building gaming PCs for more than a decade, so you know you can trust their latest creation, the Talon. Encased in a steel and aluminum chassis, this monster rig tears through the latest titles with an Intel Core i7 processor, dual NVIDIA GTX 480 video cards, and eight gigs of RAM. Plus a one-year warranty and lifetime tech support come standard for $3,500. Okay, so... Oh. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Sorry, Falcon. <laughs> okay, um. So uh, there was uh, the monster case on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and compared to this, uh, compared to that, this thing... This is, is the Falcon. The Falcon is pretty... Yeah, okay, I just want to... Sorry. Compared to the monster from Monday, this is actually really tame. Uh, yeah. It's only about a foot and a half tall. It's a little over six inches wide. So it's obviously not big and bad like a lot of the gaming machines we reviewed. Mm -hmm. I prefer them smaller. Uh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, on behalf of men everywhere. <laughs> Secondly, um, this, I, I don't mind this. Like I said yesterday, it looked like Skynet was invading your living room. This, it, despite the, uh, the, the paint job on it, which is the Subaru sort of rally pearl blue, uh, need to put gold rims on it uh, job. Um, it, it's really nice. It's understated. It's small. It, it, it can stay out of the way. It's a actually a, a, a striking paint job and mm -hmm. It just looks good throughout, so I'm, I'm a fan of it. I, I don't think gaming cases need to be these giant elaborate things with neon everywhere. Unless, unless you want to get in there and do a bunch of stuff to it. So that's the one bad thing about having a smaller case, is that there's not enough room to get in there and make modifications if you want. So yeah. is that the case I mean, that, that is a typical argument, yes. With this one, it's actually not really that, that bad. Falcon Northwest did an excellent job of maximizing the space inside. They have great cable management. They use smaller heat sinks. There you can see a small liquid cooling device on the processor. Now here's the thing. The hard drives are not easily removable. Um, you have to actually unscrew the metal base that they're held in. So if you want to expand, that might be an issue. You even have to take the back of the case off to That's unscrew annoying. a set of screws there. I like there. when they're in the, on the front. Yeah, I just wish case design would get past this now, having multiple screws on mm -hmm. each side. But with that said, it, it still has plenty of room inside, so well, it's, it's easy yeah, to get in. Maybe, you know, a little annoying to get in, but once you're in, mm -hmm. you're good. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Fit like a falcon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> so this has a, this has two video cards and mm -hmm. an overclocked quad-core processor. The iBuy Power from Monday only had one video card, yes. uh, but it had a six-core processor. So uh, putting all that together, blah, 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 which one's better? Uh, what did you just say? Uh, I said, ah, attack! Oh, you have to say Falcon attack. Sorry. See, then you get this. Go back, go back to the seven. single. Okay. So what I'm saying is... Attack! Falcon attack. Is it a laser beak? What is it? <laughs> For gaming, this thing is a lot better. In our 3D Mark Vantage test, it barely came in as our second fastest computer of all time. So that is fast, to say the least. This will play any game on the market with maxed out settings, and we are confident that it will be great for years to come. But one note, for productivity tasks, it was not as fast as the iBuy Power from Monday. And again, that's because of the, the, the slower processor. Um, it's also not as quiet as the iBuy Power, but it's still, it's still quiet. It's not, it's not loud by any stretch. So again, gaming, this thing will chew through games for probably years to come. On the productivity side of things, a little slower than Mondays. Okay, well, the configuration we have here is a little over $3,500. Mm -hmm. And if you want the custom paint job, 
It's an extra $400 on top of 400 that. 400 bucks, yes. So what are we rating it at that price? Uh, again, 400 bucks for whatever paint job you want, which is nice. It's not, you don't have to get the Falcon on the side. <laughs> but with all that considered, five out of five, everybody. Yay! We like the understated design. It's a solid build quality. The performance, of course, for gamers is absolutely outstanding. So they did a great job. So Falcon gets a, what was that? Oh, oh, wait. I got a five out of five, Olivia. I was trying to Don't play. Five, I got a five. Trying out. to play with you. I get. But well, you ran that. Tomorrow on Gadgetron, <laughs> we'll rate one last gaming PC, the Main Gear Shift Extreme. It's got a redesigned case for maximum heat dissipation and can suggest <laughs> support 24 gigs of RAM. Falcon! Ah! Yay! <laughs> Bloody Death at a game where you can win virtual Japanese food. Ooh. And later, a robot with feelings joins the Navy. Yeah. And a new tactical vehicle disembiggins the Humvee. Stay tuned, everybody. The workers demand more attack of the show. We'll be right back. Intrepid nerd reporter Blair Butler went to Hasbro headquarters Hi, to get the load on their big San Diego Comic Con exclusive. That is convenient. Tell you, I'm in love with this hoodie. Yeah, it's a I get sexy it. I get hoodie. It. Again, stop trying to do me. Uh, hey, if you uh, want to know what the fanboys will be scrambling to buy at next week's Comic Con, we've got the inside scoop right here. I'm here at Hasbro headquarters in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, to give you guys an early look at some of Hasbro's big Comic Con exclusives. here with Jeff, uh, the G.I. Joe expert here at Hasbro. What makes a Comic-Con exclusive exclusive? What we typically try to do is take a product that we normally wouldn't do in our main line or even as an exclusive for a retailer and do something very special for Comic-Con. This year we're doing my dream come true. I grew up in the 80s playing with G.I. Joe and nothing says 1980s G.I. Joe more than Sergeant Slaughter. So we're very fortunate to have both a primary figure and a variant uh, with Sarge's likeness, and we've got him in his uh, tank top, the USA, as the wrestler, complete with a weight belt. We also have him as he appeared in the Triple T tank when that came out, more of a, a military figure. He's got a whistle, it comes with a baton, his hat, everything's authentic. What's the price difference between these two and the, the run difference? Like, how many are They'll there? They'll both be $12.99. We do have a slightly smaller quantity of the variant, the more uh, greenish figure, but we'll have plenty for, uh, for the fans who come to Comic-Con. Of course, it would not be Comic-Con without a Star Wars exclusive. Tell me about this. It's uh, another comic pack with uh, two exclusive figures. Uh, and the real kind of aha for me in this pack is it's uh, a Darth Maul with a kind of bionic leg. So Darth Maul comes back. And what would he look like if he were to kind of be put back together again? Yeah, it's this crazy roided out Darth Maul after he got chopped in half by Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. And he's back. He's got little spider legs, right? He does, got little spider legs, and then, you know, kind of the, uh, the unexpected hero uh, kind of comes along with him in this pack, and uh, Owen Lars. And even hornier Darth Maul, which I know does not sound right. But... <laughs> of course, when you think Hasbro, you got to have Transformers. So tell me about the Transformers exclusives that we're going to have at Comic-Con this year. Yeah, so we actually have two exclusives this year. Uh, the first is we're going to have Mighty Mug Prowl. This will be the first and only time he will be released. This will be very limited quantities, but again, of course, enough out there for the fans. But he'll be coming with his iconic blaster and his great, you know, 1984 deco. Of course, you have the Autobots answer to Soundwave. This is amazing. It's like the 80s all over. It is. You know, last year we uh, had Soundwave, so of course we had to neutralize uh, that Decepticon threat with Autobot Blaster. And he, of course, comes with his minions. Anyone who knows the Transformers back in the day, they were definitely his iconic partners. And again, answering uh, Soundwave and his Decepticon minion threat. This will be the first time he's actually released since 1984, so we're really excited about being able to, you know, again, get this out there into fans' hands. Yeah, I still got it, but if you want it and more exclusives like this, you have to go to San Diego Comic-Con to get everything Hasbro has to offer. Do you want to appear on our show live in San Diego? Yes, as a matter of fact.
of fact, I do. Then come to our Comic-Con booth dressed as your favorite AOTS character Saturday from noon to 4 p.m. Yes. The best AOTS costumes have a chance to be on the show with the generic white dude and the half-Asian chick. <laughs> and you could be Jeremy from Jeremy's Dragon yeah. Corner. That's my maybe, uh, maybe Boba Fetish. I like that. That's a good one. What about the ice cream man? Yeah. Ice cream! Get creative for that one. What about a hype machine? Yeah. I mean, I've never seen people walk around with big boxes in their heads today. It. it doesn't matter. Maybe you'll come as one of us. More Who obscure knows? the better, really. Mm -hmm. All right, we welcome you all. Except Drunkle Ted's. Aw, Drunkle Ted's. In this week's game break, we focused on the indie games, The Leisurely Labyrinth, Bloody Death, and Baby Maker Extreme. Extreme! <laughs> Everybody, it's X Plays Adam Sessler! It's you, it's you, buddy! Oh, you're right! You, you get yeah. to wake up with the joy and knowledge that you are you every day. I, I, I want to mention, do you know that that Russian spy at Microsoft codenamed Skittles? Are you, is that true? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, so, you know, uh, the the lollipop fluffy, girl yeah, and Skittles and, and yeah, the little fluffy yeah, tiger. Uh, let's talk about good Microsoft products and games. There are a ton of, well, good is, I guess, relative in this discussion. <laughs> uh -huh. I love these things because there is a ton of cheap indie games out there. We showed off uh, Try Not to Fart and yeah. Fish Listening to Radio, and the viewers really liked it, so I thought we'd highlight some more. And you said it was like a, a bizarre yeah, I, I, homework I, I, assignment. I, I, I guess, you know, like, Kevin wants to talk about these games. I'm like, oh, well, Kevin's very good on the pulse of this stuff. <laughs> not and I'm watching going, has Kevin been to a doctor? <laughs> I haven't, but I might need one in our first game, Baby Maker Extreme. It's from Stegosaurus Games. Uh, it's not as gross as it sounds. It's not connect enabled and you don't gyrate your hips at all. Um, it is a baby Skittles. ejecting catapult game where you go flying out of the womb and through the hospital. And Adam? I know, yeah, well, okay, see, obviously, what you're trying to do is you're trying to go as far as possible. You need to hit some of these objects that are on the screen and you can use a dive to hit them. Yeah. The objects it's, it's actually kind of compelling. It's kind of, <laughs> right? Because the, once I realized what I was trying to do, I'm like, well, I want to see how far my baby can go. And, <laughs> exactly. The baby kind of pops on out, and if you, you can, as you said, there's a dive mechanic, so you can make your baby drop quicker and hit the objects that glow, which will send you back into the now, air. Now, during the, during the push phase the initial at the beginning. Push, yes. um, the crowning. Really, you, you got to tap that button. You know, like it, it makes a big difference. got to mash. And remember to breathe because you don't want to yeah, pull anything. Exactly. Um, and what's great is that you can also swap out the baby for your Xbox avatar. So the cute little avatar version of yourself can go flying out of the old... Uh, Look at that. The old downstairs mix-up. I mean, the, the, who eats dinner in the delivery room? The game is crazy. I like it. It's 80 MS points or one actual dollar, Microsoft. Figure that out. It's cheaper than Lamaze. Uh, much cheaper. And I think, I think you know what? It, it's simple. It's cute. It's worth the buck. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's. you know what? I, I, I got to... Tip my hat to the name. I mean, on the name alone, many people in their right minds will say, I, I have a buck. Yeah. I need to check it out. Baby Maker Extreme, there you go. Uh, I like supporting any games, so here's one of them. But next, this is a Japanese game called Yukuri no My Q. Which I did not know. No, no. All I know is I, I had on my list strange Japanese game, and I looked for the kanji in a list of indie That's, games. Yeah, that hard it's Yukuri no Q. And it translates to The Leisurely Labyrinth. <laughs> it's from developer Hasi. This is a a first-person shooter maze crawler, everything else is total WTF. It makes no sense. Yeah, you punch these guys in the face, you collect things. Now, maybe, I think maybe we'll get to that, yeah, that, that treasure chest there. See, and then you get pictures of Japanese food. Of course you get pictures of Japanese lunches. Well, but I, you know what? I had one of ramen, which made me hungry for ramen. So actually, all this game did was kind of disappoint me and frustrate me. It, it, it's... Now, and usually we talk about strange Japanese games. I think this is strange for Japanese games. Right, yeah, <laughs> even by those standards, it's very weird. Um, now, this is now other games I could say, you know what, spend a couple bucks on and try it. This one, I think the demo will probably get you through the animated walls yeah. and the weird, the weird things. But it's kind of nice that there's at least now this platform because for for years it was PC only. If you want right. to try innovative or just plain bizarre things made by small teams, it's nice that they have this platform. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those games. It's like sleeping with your neighbor. You do it for the story. Not for the experience. <laughs> okay, and finally, this is the game that I really want to talk about here. This one is is Bloody Death from Monkey Wear Studios. Yeah. This is a throwback to like the live action night trap games of the uh, the nineties. Because everyone's like, I need that throwback. <laughs> yes. I need I need to remember misery and when games were great. Look at and the title screen. Plato was alive. Look at the title screen for this game, Bloody Death. I mean, somebody figured out MS Paint and rocked this. Um, it's this is one of those. It's so good, it's bad. Yeah. Um, the the killer in this game is. Faceless killer or killer face uh, as the. Now, all of this is quick time events. Yes. 
right there. So buttons pop up on the screen. Now, you have to press in them in order. Act of what might be genius sadism. Because if that's the only way you play the game, you have to watch these unendurably yes. acted sequences. Yes. Yes. It really. <laughs> and there's no warning whatsoever that a quick time event might be coming. It Your just, character's breathing, and it could happen. It starts with the faceless killer in the house. There is no setup. There's no setup. There's a whatsoever. girl behind a couch and a man with an axe. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I thought maybe it was supposed to inspire fan fiction to figure out how she got yeah. there. But here's the thing. I, I, I watched a friend play this who was genuinely scared and compelled by the scenes. Was concerned. I was laughing at the acting and for me that alone was it i want to just show you a quick let me set up the scene here faceless killer causes a blackout he hits the power line or the grid with an axe They're, the guys inside are in the middle of playing xbox this is their reaction hell no what no i was leading the power is off oh my god no Sharon. That Sharon. is triple A acting, my friend. Right I mean, you know what? That's like completing level three. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. I mean, it's it's a it's ridiculous. It's an indie game. Look, the guy who did the art direction for the title screen also programmed the game and is the lead actor. So you know what you're getting. And, and also, you there's, there's some wonderful misspellings. And yes. right, right at, 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 at the outset, yeah, you 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 know you're in for a tweet treat tweet. Um, <laughs> Don't play it alone, though, because I, th I think with friends, the, the humor comes out. Yeah, and make friends with Patron before you sit down with this game. Yeah, or... I, I, I was up in the office half an hour in, I looked in the mirror, and yeah, there was a tear. <laughs> like, oh, never <laughs> so get good. that back. No, oh, I was leading. Um, <laughs> uh, when you die, also, there's a cutscene that tells you how the game ends, uh, and it's, it's, it's B-roll really? news shots of uh, forests and stairs and houses. Uh, spoiler. I guess this is a giant spoiler, but whatever. You should still download it for yourself. But the news report says, where is it? There it is. Killer face strikes back. Oh, the dreaded killer face. Just download it. Give it a try. It's a couple bucks. Um, there's some fun to be had. Uh, yes, yes. There, there definitely is. Uh, it, it's, it's been a slow day. This is when things kind of revved up for me. So. Good. Adam, I'm sorry that this was the, uh, no. <laughs> the assignment for the week. But I thank you for playing them. Uh, is, there, is there one that you would recommend over any of the others if someone had to go try one? Extreme Baby Maker. <laughs> I just said Extreme Baby Maker. That one really leads the pack. The cream rises to the top. Tell me about the rabbits, George. Adam Sessler, everybody. Thank you for joining us, sir. We appreciate it. It'd be beautiful. Someone had to take you to task. <laughs> okay, look. Humvees were fun and all, but uh, now the Army needs something a little bigger. Mm, size queens. We'll take a look at a tactical vehicle that makes a Hummer look like a Ford Fiesta. And today's... Military tech. I mean, really, who drives a Fiesta even if it's free? <laughs> Burgers on the grill, hot chicks in bikinis. This is America! And what better way to celebrate our freedom than to catch up on some military tech? While the Army and Marines are getting safe with their vehicles, the Navy is getting their safety treatment with a robot. Yeah, that's right, your favorite emotional humanoid Nexi has joined the Navy. You might remember Nexi as the mobile, dexterous social robot that conveys a wide range of emotion with its face. But now aboard the U.S. Navy vessel, it has changed its name to Octavia and learned to do magic tricks. Yep, magic tricks. The instructor simply demonstrates the trick to Octavia as it tracks his movements, and this teaches the robot gesture recognition and how to physically express itself without speaking. And that's helpful, because in most emergency situations, it's too loud to actually hear any dialogue. Octavia's facial expressions and hand gestures make it much easier to communicate. But we still love to hear its heroic one-liners. I will die due to safety. Using a wireless operation system, Octavia can complete rescue missions with minimal human oversight. Directions are sent to the robot using the MDS software, while a UAV flies overhead to send a live camera feed of its environment. The situation is all clear. Oh, robots. I knew you'd save us after all. Now we all know our boys on the front line wouldn't be able to do what they do without getting a little dirty sometimes. Which is why Supercat brings us the latest addition to their light-protected wheeled vehicle series. The HMT-400, or as the British like to call it, the Jackal. HMT stands for High Mobility Transporter, along with a V-shaped hull and mine blast protection. This Supercat can take some serious hits. The idea was to make a multi-purpose, all-terrain vehicle. 
It can serve as an ambulance to transport aid or as an operations carrier to deliver weapons and communications. No matter what the mission is, the Jackal can do it all while getting down and dirty in some muddy waters, slippery slopes, and rocky inclines. I guess the Brits are expecting some serious off-road rage in their missions. Lastly, we have what soldiers are calling the official replacement of the Humvee. It's the JLTV, which stands for Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, a high-tech infantry carrier with a cargo hauler that also serves as an ambulance. Lockheed Martin built two, four, and six-seat versions of this beast so that it can be used for various types of operations with the same protection standards across the board. The JL's optimized V-hole helps it withstand some mine blasts while maintaining directional stability on rough terrain. Plus, it can reach a top speed of 102 miles per hour, which is pretty impressive for a vehicle that weighs 8 tons. With a full production schedule plan for 2015, Lockheed is shipping 60,000 JLTVs to the Army and 5,500 to the Marines. Oh yes, that's a whole lot of freedom. So whether it's a robot learning magic to save our lives out on the sea, or a huge vehicle to safely haul our asses across the desert, we can rest assured that our boys have our backs with the latest military tech. Stay tuned for Dr. J. Brown Michelle Johnson to dazzle us with stories about working with Nick Cage on The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kevin sat down with actual AOTS fan and Sorcerer's Apprentice uh, star Jay Baruchel. Yes, we talked about text-based sports video games, magic, and the joys of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I'm well, thanks. How are you? Uh, I'm doing very well. It's a pleasure to have you here. You actually knew about our show, which oh, is... Oh, no. You have no idea. That is a pleasant departure from what I normally get. It's like, who am I talking to today? Uh, I'm Kevin. <laughs> Great. Are you the PA? Where's the host? <laughs> so, so thank you for having an understanding. No, I just like these chairs. I, I've assembled you all here for a reason. <laughs> I, I, uh, yes. yeah. No, no. This is like... this. It's an embarrassing thing. This this show is on in our house. Like This channel is on 24-7. I, I'm not, listen, I'll tell you what, I, I, am, I am simultaneously honored, and the fact that you admitted it's embarrassing that it's on all the time <laughs> absolutely offends me. I, I meant it was so, embarrassing in that. No, 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 no I, I, get you know, you, I got what you meant. Exactly. We're useless when it comes to, Yeah, well. Why don't you yeah, well, the movie, Jay? What was it going to be? Uh, Cage is a nice guy, magic's fun. That was like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. What's it really like working with him? That's it. Exactly. Jay, when you were on set. <laughs> Please, I'm conducting. When you were on set, did you really get to throw fireballs? I did. I did. No, I was uh, t sadly groomed for that my whole life. Uh, what, no, oh, but, like what? Street Fighter fireballs is what you grew oh, up with? All or? of the Hadoukens, you know. It's just a product of my generation. Also, like my mother's. <laughs> as nerdy as you think I am, you have never met my mother. So. Uh, well, she's, go on. I want to meet this mom. She go said. Ahead. Well, she, she's prone to staring at cups and hoping that uh, psychokinesis will take place. Oh, really? and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> has it, has it yet? But uh, this is all to say that uh, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't practicing for this movie my entire, Your entire life. life yeah. Yeah. Your mom really wanted the role, it sounds. But, <laughs> uh, More than anything. So, I mean, but this year, though, has been off the charts insane for you. You've been in everything. Hey, and, well, and, but I yeah. wonder, like, with, with a work schedule like that, you are a gamer. You are a bit of a self-professed yeah, yeah. Do you have time to, to play anything? Or do I make that time. It always uh, it, it, it eats into my uh, efficiency as a, you know, in the, any job I have to accomplish. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, no. That's called I, being a gamer. That's, that's part just of the great, course. pretty much it. No, and, and but what's worse is that the games that I play are so bloody obscure that like when everyone's like, "Oh, you're a gamer, awesome, man!" So COD, I'll be like, "No, f Football Manager 2010, <laughs> <laughs> or, really? or or NHL Eastside Hockey Manager 0607. They only made one. <laughs> awesome, right? That's I think the title alone tells me that's as close as you can get to an actual video game without having any fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, more or less, it's ri it's basically 99% text, yeah. which is uh, <laughs> which no is for the awesome. 80s, cutting edge. But now <laughs> it's like exactly. uh, I'm a level 70 in Excel spreadsheet pro no, man, master revision less, too. Yeah, it's no I, big deal. I kill it, logo writer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to high school with the son of the, uh, the guy who invented Logo Writer. Oh. A little bit of trivia. Great TV, isn't it? No, no, this is great. Actually, we're going we're gonna to make great TV right now. We're going to take a look at a clip that you physically brought yourself oh, on no. VHS. So oh, here it is. No. Uh, a look at the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, God. Your ingenuity and your heart will give you an advantage over Morgani. They rely only on the power of their magic. But if you're up against the wall, there's only one weapon of choice. Yeah, nothing, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing. I got it, I got one, I got one. Underwhelming. Again. Peace, that's what happens. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nutshot. High, high brow stuff, hey. Always. You've seen this show. I mean, at least at least you hit your balls with magic. Here it's normally flaming baseball bats. Yeah, fair so enough. you did good. Fair enough. I do have to ask though, Please. what's it like with Nick Cage question? And I only ask because like he is he is a wizard. He's a no, magician. No, he made indeed. his money disappear. No. But did did he teach you? Come on. That's unfair. Listen. I'm sure he's the nicest guy in the world, but here's the thing. I saw him on Letterman, yeah. and I actually am a huge Nick Cage fan. Yeah, like, just right. love the films. He was on Letterman, and he told a story about taking mushrooms with his cat. Yeah, staring at the cat. Talking. This is the yeah. story he's telling David Letterman. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can only imagine you got a Taylor three. Oh yeah, he, Letterman didn't get a <laughs> even a taste of the. Uh, <laughs> Archaeopteryx debacle, which is the missing link between dinosaurs and birds. <laughs> it, 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 it ended with it ended with uh, with Cade saying a line out of uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He said, "So it should have been in a museum." <laughs> uh, so. I'm assuming you had a, uh, just a blast doing this project. Ah, oh, man, listen, I, I know it sounds like a, it's a real cliche, and I wish I could say that, like, he and I were at odds the whole time, but, like, I don't know, we're just, just both super weird. Like, that's like, <laughs> we were kind of tailor-made for each other. Like, I don't know, you, you won't see either of us on red carpets that we have nothing to do with, you know? Right. And, like, and so, like, you know, we just, it was six months of... I don't know, talking about the advent of industrial music and Hitler's obsession with the occult. And of, all course, sorts, uh, of course. Of course, I expect nothing else. All that chick magnet talk. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like Nick Cage's Twitter would probably sound like Nigerian spam. <laughs> just one, one message at a time. Just the most random facts and he, interests he, ever. He's prone to ethereal observations like, what is it about danger that's so compelling? <laughs> what do you answer to that? But no, you don't answer. Yeah, you yeah. sit and enjoy your craft that service. More or less, yeah, enjoy. pretty much. Jay, uh, absolute pleasure to hey, meet you. Congrats. Right. Being here. Everything. A really big deal for me to be here. I, I'm sorry to take up time from Football Manager Pro. I'll let you get back to, <laughs> to pushing numbers. Thank you very much. You guys go see the Sorcerer's Apprentice. It's in theaters now. Jay Baruchel. <laughs> Coming up Monday on an all-new Attack of the Show, Chris Hardwick drops by Gadget Prawn with a review of the Evo 4G. This puppy boasts dual cameras and download speeds 10 times faster than 3G. But is it an iPhone killer? Then Blair Butler talks to actor Sam Worthington and his producing partners about their new comic books, Damaged and Patriots. And for the first time ever, we'll see the actual dark side of the moon and learn where scientists predict we'll find signs of life outside our solar system in Galactopedia. See it Monday. Back in the 80s, Eddie Murphy turned the comedy world upside down with his jaw-droppingly offensive series of concert films. Yeah, in today's AOTS Classic, we take a look back at my own uncensored comedy special from 1987. <laughs> and my very unfortunate wardrobe choice. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Yeah, so, uh, so Bill, Bill Cosby called me up, and he was like, Red Florida in the yellow pudding pop. <laughs> That's it. Unbelievable. Well, here's the thing about bitches. They're bitches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what, you know what I'm saying. Uncensored. And what's what's the deal with these homosexuals? It's like uh, the guys having sex with other guys. That's crazy. Right. Untamed. You guys hear about this AIDS stuff? Anybody? Yeah, I don't believe it either. Yeah, all I know is I don't like wearing rubbers. You hear me, fellas? Where, where my fellas? Where my fellas? Unbat. You know what kind of people crack me up the most, though? The black people, right? But, oh, what? Kevin Ferreira, raw. For a great martial artist, every part of the body can be considered a deadly weapon. Yeah, but for this karate master, the body is more like a sponge. A misguided sponge that absorbs concussive brain damage instead of uh, water, I guess. It's time for today's Epic Fail. Epic better use yeah. like uh like building himself a hospital bed yeah or, or change up his act i mean anybody can break boards but how many people can collapse in a fleshy heap for a living <laughs> might be a market for it is all i'm saying <laughs> go to g4tv.com slash aots for all the things you saw today and more did i do it right uh I, what you said we're on. I was making sure. Yeah, great. Right. She did a good job. Yeah. Right. No idea what just happened. <laughs> Stick around, everybody. And uh, I, I do want to say thanks to Oprah. Yeah. And we're looking forward to, to being neighbors, though. Can't wait. It's up inside. It starts right now. That's a hay slip, everybody. That's me. Look at that. Love Oprah. Look at that facial structure. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that.